morning everybody just got to San Sebastian here we have a solar 12k that is powering up the offices on this factory turns out the capacity wasn't enough so we are going to replace it with a solar 15k and I open up the inverter Comes with a fresh cleat. It's gonna be an even disc mounted on the wall. You can see it, it weighs about 120 pounds, so I'm gonna need some help putting it on the wall. I take this plastic cover off. We are waiting to be able to turn off the AC from the grid so we can work without the lines energized and we have the clear we're gonna switch that transfer switch up there back to Luma which is the grid here in Puerto Rico and then we're gonna be able to change this inverter without having power on the lines keep in mind you also have to de-energize the PV as well as kill the switch on the battery Turn off the light, bulb, the light wires we cannot shut off this cable is not energized because this is the low cable. But once we get the grid, they're gonna be energized. We cannot shut off the place because this is a factory and we don't want them to lose power. So we're gonna have to do it live. We're gonna use electrical tape, tape all the cables. These are being energized as well. Take them out one by one. Do not take both of the cables out. Just just to for safety measurements, you will have 240s. You don't want those cables touching each other. We get enough tape in there. We took off everything except the battery. The battery does not have a disconnect down there. It's just this disconnect right here. So if we take those off, they can spark. We they're not gonna spark if they don't touch each other, but it can happen. So we're gonna take off one cable from the battery down here. Let's open up this cover right here. Here you have the batteries. Now we're gonna disconnect the negative cable or the positive, it really doesn't matter. As long as you break the connection from the batteries to the inverter. I already took, the, took off the battery cables and get ahead and took these off, these connectors. These are fairly easy to take off. Now we are ready to take off the inverter. We're gonna have to move up the 15K because it needs space to ventilate from below. So we're gonna take off that little box right there. That's a, a KVAR energy controller, a little box right there to move it up like probably like 10 inches and then place the 15k so it can have space to ventilate. So here's my trusty friend Aníbal. He's helping me dismount the inverter. He does. He's the one doing the dirty work right here. It's a challenge. So Aníbal already dismounted the inverter. Took it off and put it to the side here. That inverter would be reused by the customer. We have to mount the inverter a little bit higher because it needs space, it needs, it needs space to ventilate, like we said. There you go. We're gonna level it, use the French cleat. Mount it up and then mount up the inverter. We already have the French cleat mounted up. We use that metal part, metal part of a uni rack rail to hook it up to the sink. This is a, this is a homemade hookup. And we're gonna put this big boy right there. And I'm gonna need my hands. So there you have it. Inverter is mounted up. Now we just need to 
change this gauge of cable we're gonna step up to odd odd two cable then put some conduits right here to connect with this metal box and then connect it to the respective wires PV battery and grid Finishing up the connections here, we threw a new cable in, get the, the gauge up, now we're just finishing up connecting this last cable. There is voltage here on the bars up top, so I have to be very careful. There we go, that's the last one. So we installed all the conduits already. Next step is to get the cables inside the inverter and connect everything up. You have everything almost set up. The only thing missing are the battery cables. We connected the Jane cables, load, and the grid is missing too. The PV is already connected. Connect the battery, and we are gonna turn on the inverter so we can power up the building and turn off the grid so I can connect the grid, grid cables to the inverter without them being energized. We're finishing up here. Connecting the batteries last, so we didn't have any type of voltage in the cables. Something to keep in mind, first connect it to the inverter, lastly to the batteries, so you don't have voltage when dealing with the cables. Next step, turn it on the inverter. So the inverter is now turned on. Everything's looking good so far. It's already normalized. The last two cables that we need to connect are these two right here. Gonna de-energize the grid, keep it energized with the inverter. That's what we're gonna do right now. We turn on the, the DC disconnect. You're gonna see, I don't know if you can see it in the video. You're gonna see that PV is coming in, charging what the battery is demanding. So now we're gonna change up the battery settings. These are 250 uh, amp hour AGM battery. So we're gonna set it to 500 because we have two banks. Maximum rating capa uh, amp draw for these batteries is roughly 60 amps per bank. So we're gonna set this to 120 as max because we have two banks, two battery banks. That's that is.
This is the temperature compensation. I'm gonna leave that as two. I'm gonna leave this uh, battery percent charge. Activate battery. That's okay to save the settings. Go back, charge. So we want this flow voltage to be at, uh, that's 57 volts flat. Sorry, see, float. We're gonna put it a little bit down to 54. These batteries are very sensitive, so we must use the correct parameters. You need to get them from your supplier. They do not equalize, so they are sealed a, uh, AGM batteries. I'm gonna set it to zero and zero. Just in case the equaliz equalization voltage, we're gonna keep it the same as the absorption voltage. We want it to charge with the grid if the batteries are too low. So we're gonna set that up to 35%. And only draw, I'm gonna leave it at 80 amps because we don't want to use much charge from the grid. Keep the cost down. What we have right there, go back. This charge rate, you can leave it as it is, low battery, it's gonna give an alarm. Restart voltage, the voltage at which, or percentage, I mean, at which the inverter would turn back on, set at 50. Uh, battery empty voltage can set a 44. That's this point of reference for the inverter. And leave the resistance as is. The charge efficiency. Gonna let it at 99%. That's all for the battery settings. Limiter. This is a uh, grid sailing. So we eventually are gonna turn on the grid cell, but not right now because we want that grid port to be de-energized so we can connect our cables without getting uh, shocked. Just to minimize the risk. So we're gonna leave it a limited power to load for now. Uh, press OK, go back. And the gen is connected to the gen port right here. So we do not need to habilitate the gen connected to grid input. Battery first, just to Give it priority for the battery. Battery, I mean, sorry. Now the grid setup. Grid reconnect time set up at one minute. That's good. Power factor one. And it's set for UL1741SB. That's the requirement here for Puerto Rico. It's probable that we need to use general standard, general standard for now because the voltage here is a little bit high. The manual shows the parameters, parameters that you need to set up for this space right here, for specifically, specifically for Puerto Rico. And we're gonna be changing those eventually. That's it. That's all the settings for now. And we're gonna energize the building using battery and solar. Turn on, this is a bypass switch right now. The system is bypassed. So when we turn on right here, we're gonna energize the building using the system. You'll see that the production goes up because it limits the power to the lows just as we set it up. That's normal. That, that does not mean that the total capacity of the system is, is 2.7. Just that it's supplying to the loads and the battery as necessary and it's not producing anymore. I'm gonna make sure that the grid port is de-energized. You can hook it up, right, look it up right there. 16 volts and 45 volts. Those could be false, false readings. What we're looking at is that we don't have 120 on those lines. Looks good, so now we're gonna turn off the rib breaker. That is set up right here. Take off that plate right there. Turn off the grip breaker. So now we don't have power on these lines right here. 
gonna hook it up hook it up to this port to this port right here the grip port and then check for correct voltages on the screen so we're doing the grid connection with split bolt tying up real good and then you insulate it like this using this rubber insulation tape and then electrical tape you don't want to get in a short so to make sure you do double insul insulation one step away from having the whole system complete we're going to flip up this breaker right here this is the grid break grid breaker right there and I see that the AC light turns on wait six, 60 seconds for the AC to kick in and that's it for this 15k we're gonna do a test right now try to run off grid turn off turn off the breaker right here the paint mixing paint mixing machines are running gonna turn off the PV switch just stay in batteries This is what we're pulling right now. 3,157 watts. Consuming straight from the battery. Both machines are running as of right now. We are waiting for the peak. We're gonna turn off the paint machines, paint mixing machines. Oh, there we go. We saw the surge go up to four kilowatts. This inverter didn't, didn't even feel it. With the 12K, we were seeing an overload because it was consuming more amps from one line to the other than the other. With this inverter, we have 4,000 watts coming overall. 2,200 from one side, one line, and 1,910 coming from the other from the other line so no problem whatsoever we got up to six kilowatts the loads went up I think they turn on the paint mix machine there we go we got no overload. So far looking good. That's it for today's job. We replaced the 12K with the 15K. And supporting all the loads in this factory. So I hope you see you again. Come back, follow if you learn something, if you find it useful. Drop a follow and a like. See you later. Peace.